Welcome to a new video. Today I've got Yannick on board. Hello together. My name is Yannick. I'm a senior system engineer and I'm a Microsoft MVP. Very cool to have you on board. So <clears throat> today's topic should be automation and Intune, enterprise mobility, also a little bit from the Azure AD identity side. But how do we get started? What is Azure automation and what can it be or how can it be combined with Intune? Yeah, I guess Azure Automation is a really powerful service um, to yeah automate stuff, um, reoccurring tasks, um, stuff what you have to do every day, every week, every hour. And I guess this is also the goal. Um, as a high skilled person, you will not take care uh, to yeah regular lazy task. You want to concentrate to move forward to drive digitalization and not to. Yeah, uh, I don't know, add members to a group and stuff like this. And for this, it's really important to automate stuff, uh, especially in Intune. Uh, when you see um, the move in the last years, in the past, you had SCCM, you was responsible for everything. You have to maintain the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You, um, yeah, was a little bit not so flexible how you have it today in Intune. Microsoft took over a lot of responsibilities. And you can concentrate more on the content and the content means also concentrate on automation to have a good user experience, but also, yeah, to not take care about everything, try to move load, um, yeah, into automations. And for this, um, Azure automation is really a uh, really great service to do this, but also in the Azure stack, you um, have other services. Maybe you can talk uh, some words about other possibilities, what, um, <laughs> what you have instead of Azure Automation. Yes, of course. So you named the Azure Automation as an Azure resource service. Uh, pretty cool, but you need to know PowerShell um, for scripting um, because I think the easiest method is really to integrate the PowerShell script as a runbook in the Azure Automation account. And then um, normally you have a managed identity who grabs those resources at the Graph API through an enterprise app or yeah, like I mentioned, the managed identity is an uh, is a service principle in your directory and um, yeah that's certainly a, a cool feature but uh, if you're not that fit with, uh, with scripting and coding you can choose uh, the logic apps for example as a low code uh, um, option and there you can uh, click more or less through a UI or have uh, different connectors and you also can directly connect to uh, for example graph API through HTTP requests um, so I think that's uh, generally a really, a really good solution. Yeah. Um, as a question for you, what are typical tasks you would automate or what uh, automation scripts do you have in your environment or maybe also published in the community? Mm -hmm. I think there are different kinds. One, uh, one kind of automation is to move load, like um, when a new joiner roll a device put in, in a group new joiner. This is a simple example, yeah. but you can also build automations to have reporting, for example, to get yeah, a weekly report, which new uh, enrolled devices you have in, our, in your um, environment. But you also have a possibility to make live monitoring or also more intelligent monitoring. I also write some blogs about anomaly detection. This yeah. means oh, yeah. um, to see um, what is a normal error rate of your application installation. And if you have an unnormal crow of this, um, of this count, you get a notification and can really proactively look into this before it has a higher impact on, on user side. This some, um, yeah, general examples. Um, did you also have some ideas or examples um, for automation? Yes, for me, a personal highlight is clearly that um, if you have the integration to Graph API, you can talk to Azure AD and Intune. And then you can, for example, connect this data and uh, read user attributes for a primary user of a device. So that's a really important thing for me because uh, sometimes, you know, there's a, a user locked on on the device or enroll the device. And I need to find out, hey, where is that device? Uh, where is it located? And uh, we can only find that in the user attribute. So this connection between uh, these two services is really key that you can uh, achieve with automation. That's uh, definitely a good option. Um, maybe another topic, uh, Azure DevOps integration. I mean, also here you can uh, mostly act with or interact with Microsoft Graph. 
but um, just very shortly, Azure DevOps for automation, what can you say about that? Um, when you develop a script, um, it's important that you have the consistency. This means uh, you do something, you make a change, and then it fails. Um, and it's important that you can also go back to a previous version. And for this, Azure DevOps has um, a source control. You can create a repository, can place your script in, and um, have then the source control that you can see, hey, what was the change yesterday? Who changed something? and what is the potential root cause. But what you have in addition, you have also pipelines where you can release your code. Um, you can do for sure, you can go to automation and can change something when you don't have the whole source control stuff. But uh, with release pipelines, you have also the possibility to include tests, uh, to make security scanning of your code if a password is in and stuff like this. You're, um, if you want to do this in a professional environment, it's always better to work uh, with DevOps, with release pipelines, with clear release processes, instead of um, yeah, do uh, directly it on on the live environment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you maybe uh, talk some words about how you can set up the whole thing? Um, we talk a lot about uh, content, what you can automate, how you can automate. But how can you start? How you can um, provision and service to do this? Mm -hmm. Yes, I would say uh, we jump right into the demo, but uh, maybe as a prerequisite, if you want a national storage account or a graph, um, or for example, <clears throat> just the integration uh, to any service, um, you maybe need a national subscription. And of course, you need uh, access to graph API. So the required permissions are usually an application developer or very important if you need to consent to Graph API as a delegated or, or application permission directly, this even requires a global admin. So just make sure you have all that right roads. You maybe have, have an Azure subscription and uh, then I would say, let's uh, get into the demos. Perfect, good. Now we are back in a live demo, but before we show you step-by-step -step, uh, in the UI, what you can do uh, or how you can build automation, I would quickly talk about um, what are typical steps, how you can start with the implementation of uh, automation. In the end, the first step uh, or the pr first prerequisite, what you need is the craft call. This means you have to find out how can I get the necessary data, how I can trigger a specific action. And to do this, you have um, some uh, possibilities. The first possibility is to use uh, the network trace of your browser. This means you go to the engine portal, click this action in the UI, what you want to do, where you see the data, where you have this action, like sync a device. And in the network monitor, you can really see uh, which graph endpoint was called, what is the body, uh, which is necessary. Um, this is one way. The second way is you can use the uh, browser add-on graph x-ray. With graph x-ray, you can do the same, uh, click this action on the UI. And then um, this add-on will generate your PowerShell code, what you can then directly use in your scripts. You can also test this graph endpoints in uh, the Graph Explorer, um, develop.microsoft.com, uh, I guess is the URL. And here you can test it. Um, you can see what is the output and stuff like this. When you have it, then you develop a PowerShell script, use Visual Studio Code or another IDE on your PC locally. Uh, develop a code, uh, test it, and it, it's your case to test it in a dev environment. Use your personal user identity if you have the necessary permissions for the authentication, make it easy. And when you are comfortable that the script works, then you go to the next step. The next step is um, you need permissions. Um, here also you have two possibilities. One is you can create a service principle, add the service principle, um, the necessary permissions to the service principle and then uh, work with a secret, key, uh, put it in a key vault and uh, read it out from here. But this is not the recommend way. You have secrets and we want to get rid of secrets to have more security. Uh, another way what you can do is utilize the managed identity. A managed identity is more or less the identity of the automation account as such. And also you can put uh, on uh, um, permissions to this managed identity. And this is what Niklas now will show you how you can do this. Exactly. So I prepared an ordinary automation account, just an Azure resource. And uh, as soon as, as you created that, you can go here to identity. 
and there you will see the managed identity blade of that storage account. So it's important to note um, if it's a system aside managed identity, it lives with the life cycle of the automation account. So if you delete it, the, the, the automation account, the managed identity will be deleted too. That's not the case for the user aside managed identity. Then you, we will see here the object ID. That's uh, pretty relevant because if we now go to the identity side to Azure ID or Entra, uh, to our applications, we can set a filter to managed identities. And here, all the managed identities known from the tenant will show up. So for example, uh, the storage account we had from here before. There you will be able to see the same information, the same object IDs uh, as we have seen uh, on the other side. So now to add permissions, we can go to the permission blade. And as you can see, there's no option through the UI to grant any graph permissions or other uh, application permissions. Instead, what you need here is a script. We will do this manually with PowerShell. Um, Yannick and I often mention that script. Um, it's basically always the same. So uh, we're going just to, to leverage Microsoft Graph, um, insert the managed identity object ID here and the respective permission you need here and then run the scripts. Um, the, the permission will then get assigned and you're ready to go. What you also can do is add an Azure role assignment. So if something is directly integrated, for example, access to a storage account or to another Azure resource, it's pretty simple to set up here. Um, you can give the, the predefined Azure AD uh, roles uh, to a bunch of resources. So also a very cool option to, to fulfill that. Yes, and when this authentication part is done, then uh, we have fulfilled all the prerequisite. We have a graph endpoint. We put this graph endpoint in a PowerShell script. A PowerShell is yeah, mostly um, the language which will be used for backend automation for Intune. And we have uh, the permissions to the authentication, uh, to the automation account. And now we can go to the last part. Um, you need this automation account. You can easily deploy this uh, via the Azure portal. And then you can copy paste your script um, into a run book. This is what Niklas will now show you. You can install the necessary modules and then uh, you're good to go. This means you can um, test the script, you can schedule it, and uh, then your automation is more or less done. Good, um, Niklas, then back to you and you can say some words how you add the script to this run book. Yes, exactly. So I, show, I showed that just, um, you can just create uh, multiple run books on that, on that uh, automation account, uh, insert your PowerShell script and you're basically ready to go. Just publish it and then um, from the overview, you can start uh, it or delete it <clears throat> or also very cool, add a schedule to it. You also mentioned the modules. So for example, if you want to uh, want to use the, the graph PowerShell module in your script, you need to add this on the automation account level. This uh, needs to be done here. Just uh, add the module. And also uh, you now may ask how you can authenticate within the scripts with the managed identity of the automation account. Sounds complex, but in the end, it's pretty simple because the automation account now has permission to your Azure environment. And that's a cool thing because the Azure environment uh, knows the identity of your automation account and you have permissions to other resources. Now to access um, that managed identity within the scripts, we have environment variables. So for example, identity endpoint and the identity header. This is then a, a script sample, which you can insert and then you can connect to graph with that access token. So very cool solution. If you want to know more about it, uh, just read that blog post. I will link that down in the description. So that's uh, the most relevant thing to the automation accounts. Now I want to show a little bit uh, some of the logic apps. So the low code designer, it's the same game for the managed identity of this. So uh, equal to the storage account. And then <clears throat> instead of run books and PowerShell and modules and whatever, we have the logic app designer. Here we can add a, a trigger. For example, this is just a re recurrence like I uh, described before. And then what's really cool, we have an HTTP 
HTTP part in here um, where we can add uh, the method and the URI of graph um, also customize the headers and, and other variables and here we can select for the authentication the managed identity add graph as audience and we're ready to go. What's often needed is a parse JSON action so we will uh, transform or parse that uh, content which we got through the HTTP part and uh, transfer that right and then we can do for example for each loop for something uh, here I have a connection uh, this may be rely on your use, use case so for example um, also another HTTP part or something in Azure AD in office and so on but the principle is, is always like the same all right um, that's basically it um, that's a brief introduction to automation if you want to know more Yannick has some great blog posts about it uh, me too I will link uh, some of the some of the of our personal collection down in the description and at this point I wanted to thank you very much Yannick um, for your insights for your expertise thank you very much and uh, I would say see you next time goodbye see you next time bye bye